So micro four thirds cameras are getting more and more popular, but there's still an issue that is kind of inherent to the micro four thirds platform and that's its crop factor. Due to the nature of Micro Four Thirds being a smaller sensor, the crop factor that this causes shrinks the millimeter range of your lens and basically doubles that number by two. For example, the lens that came with my Lumix G7 is the 14 to 42 millimeter uh, kit lens uh, from Lumix. 14 millimeters is exceptionally wide in normal cases, but on a Micro Four Thirds camera, it's really a 28 millimeter lens, which is still somewhat wide, but not as wide as uh, you may want. Now there are some extra wide angle lenses out there for the Micro Four Thirds system, but they tend to dip into the fish eye territory, which ha has its purpose, but can be somewhat unattractive due to the massive distortion it causes. But don't worry, there is a knight in shining armor of this story, and that is the Laowa 7.5 millimeter rectilinear lens. It is in fact the widest, smallest rectilinear lens in the world for the Micro Four Thirds system, making it ideal for cinematographers and architectural photographers all the same, or just someone who wants a super wide angle lens. And this has been one of my favorite lenses that I've had so far on my camera. It's enabled me to shoot in my office, which is teeny tiny, and make it look a whole lot bigger than it actually is, uh, keeping my cramped angles that I had before to be much wider and much more expansive than they were originally possible. I also needed this lens for real estate photography, which I've been doing more and more uh, recently. Let's take a closer look at the lens. So we look at the lens and you notice how tiny it is. It actually comes with this uh, little hood, uh, lens hood that kind of holds onto the lens and it's a little bit in the way. It's actually kind of annoying to deal with the lens with that hood on there. And I can't imagine the hood doing so much when it's that tiny, but it's there in case you need it. So removing the lid, you see the Sea Dreamer C uh, 7.5 millimeter F2 lens. And you notice the ring has a little bit of a mounting dot on there. You can see where you can attach the things. I'm not sure exactly what you attach, maybe filters or the actual lens hood itself. And uh, let's get this thing back into range. Get a closer look at this. Okay, so the focusing ring, uh, you'll see that the infinity doesn't quite line up exactly to the red line there. It actually, the infinity mark is pretty much 10 mark right there. Uh, infinity is usually what I'll leave it at when I'm doing real estate photography, but uh, it would be nice if it lined up perfectly. The uh, aperture ring actually leaves a nice satisfying click in between notches, so you can kind of tell where you're at. It's not just kind of floating. The, uh, there's metal where it needs to be, and it feels overall pretty solid. <laughs> Look how tiny this thing is in my hands. It's so small, and the glass is really pretty looking. Now, honestly, this type of lens would be ideal for uh, drone photography because uh, a lot of high-end drones have micro four-thirds sensors on them and mounts to, and this would be an excellent thing to have on there as well but yeah that's it's a it's a pretty nice build but enough talk let's uh, let's take this thing on a b-roll uh, excursion
Well, thanks for watching, guys. I, I, I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope I didn't leave anything out. I don't think I did. Um, just wanted to highlight some of the, my favorite features of this awesome lens and uh, kind of what things I use it for. I think one of the coolest things is how you can take uh, small close-up objects, uh, make them look a whole lot bigger and bring a little bit more life to them. Uh, that's one of the cool things is that the focal range of this thing and how you can get such a tight focus or you could uh, get the focal range really wide. It's up to you and I like that about this. I think you might too. So if you're interested in buying this lens, I'll put the link below for Amazon below it. Uh, it goes for about 500 bucks right now, which is pretty reasonable. It's not overpriced or anything like that, but it's not super cheap either. But uh, for some lenses, it's considered super cheap. So anyway, that one's there. I picked out the silver one because I wanted it to stand out and it kind of matched my camera really nicely because I got the silver accent G7. So I thought it was a nice fit for my camera and kind of stood out from the other lenses I have. So that was my personal choice. You can get the black one too. Anyway, so that's it for this video. I think the next lens I'm gonna talk about is my other favorite lens, which is goes in the opposite direction. It's a vintage lens. Actually a somewhat famous vintage lens. Comment below which lens you think I'm gonna do next. All right guys, I'll talk to you later. Say goodbye to Kato. Yeah, you guys are just here for Cato, aren't you?